Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of Paul Brown's show. We're taping live at Two Expose You Studio. We have Mr. Daryl Goodman, he's the founder, Mr. Ray Harvey, Chief Engineer. I have as my special guest, I have Mr. Daryl Keith Stewart. How you doing there, Mr. Stewart? Oh. How you doing there, Mr. Stewart? All right, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Ah, uh, that's my, my homeboy. He graduated from Benedict as well. Tell mm -hmm. us a little, little bit about yourself. Uh, uh, I graduated from Benedict College uh, back in the day, back in the 80s, the, the 80s, the good 80s. 80s. Yeah, 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 yes, you sir. remember those days. Uh, and also, uh, I'm a member of uh, uh, Nabar Temple, number 128, also a member of uh, Tuscan Lodge, number 38. And uh, also a proud member of Omega Psi Phi. I'm a life yes, member sir. of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Epsilon, yes, Epsilon yes, chapter was made. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you are a prostate and liver cancer survivor. Tell the audience a little bit about your experience as a prostate and liver cancer survivor. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, a, it's a beautiful thing because there's so many folks that, that uh, suffer from prostate cancer. Uh, they, they suffer from prostate cancer and they suffer from liver cancer. I just happened to have both of them at the same time, and I was able to uh, be treated at the same time. Uh, pre pretty much what happened with me, uh, I've been doing regular checkups and things of that nature, um, and it just so happened my PSA level was high, it was elevated. And that's something that we don't normally talk about as, as black men. We don't talk about going to the doctor a lot. We don't talk about uh, certain things that happened. When, uh, when we have certain things that, uh, like, like liver cancer or prostate cancer, that, 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 that uh, we don't even talk about that in our family. And, and that's one of the important things is to talk about that in our family. But in my family, I found out later on that we had had some family members that had prostate cancer. So that matriculated, and I, and I said, well, you know, I've got to get this taken care of. I've got to get this checked out. So I had a biopsy. Biopsy was, uh, is very invasive. Uh, a lot of times the doctors won't tell you exactly what goes into the biopsy. They'll say, well, it'll be a little bit of blood afterwards, da 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 da, da, da. Well, mo a lot of men, especially men of color, we don't want to do the biopsy because we feel that it's too invasive. It, it goes into the fact that we you know, put us to sleep, then they put a probe inside our butt and everything like that. So it's, it's something we don't normally talk about, but it's something we have to expose ourselves to. But at the biopsy, found out that I had prostate cancer. Uh, 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 spores in both sides of my prostate. So, um, so I had cancer spores in both sides of my prostate. So that, that was a, a big problem, and I had uh, a number of ways I could have treated it. Uh, I decided to go with the route of just having the prostate removed. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing for us uh, because, like I said again, we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about that as men. We don't talk about that because there are certain things that happen when you have that happen. Uh, when, you, when you do those procedures, there's certain things that happen. You get erectile dysfunction. You, have, uh, you, you may have urination where, where you can't control your urination. Uh, you can't control your, your urinary tract. I, it, it is so much that happens with that. So we tend to shy away from it. So. Okay, when you found out that you had possible prostate cancer, mm -hmm. how did you handle it mentally? That was a big thing. That was a big thing because um, when the doctor first told me, first thing, the first automatic reaction was, oh, my gosh, I started crying. You know, I said, oh, cancer. Say the big Correct. C word, yeah, the cancer is like, oh, my God. Then uh, I did a mental check, and I said, okay, let me, let me call up my family. Uh, I called my aunt because she would be the most knowledgeable uh, because of her, her uh, medical uh, background, and she could relay that message to my mother and everybody else in the family in a respectful man. Then I called up uh, my pastor, and I called up uh, some of the brothers in my lodge, called up some of my frat brothers, and I just slowly matriculated that, 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 that conversation out. Um, but it was hard. It, mentally, it, you go through a phase of rejection, you go through a phase of denial, and you go through this phase of anger. Um, so uh, for me, I had a great, a fantastic support system. Uh, my support system was phenomenal. I mean, I had brothers from my lodge, brothers from my chapter. I mean, I have sisters from the OES chapter. Um, I, I had a support system in place. So um, I, I wasn't as nervous after a, a few weeks because I had a support system. Why was it so important that you had, 
kept a positive attitude because sometimes people, when they get that news, they go into a state of depression and they mm-hmm. possibly a suicide type mentality. Yeah, yeah, and, and that can very well happen. Um, a lot of people, um, they actually get, they, they seem to get despondent and they, they actually pull away from society. They pull away from the family members, they pull away from their friends, they pull away from the, uh, uh, just everyone. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to, uh, they don't want to explain it. Uh, we have a support group that we founded uh, in, in Atlanta called okay. Real Man, uh, Real Talk. And we talk openly about the effects of prostate cancer. Uh, and, and, and then in that group setting, we actually actually uh, have the family members, the sisters, the brothers, the daughters, the, um, the, the friends, female, male, all alike, come in and we talk about this. Uh, we find that there's some men that won't talk about this openly because they just don't, they just don't feel comfortable enough. With it. Me personally, I, I mean, I've been so blessed, and, and maybe that's why God put this on my, on my heart and on my spirit, uh, and, and that's why I went through what I went through, because I don't mind talking about it. Yeah, I don't mind talking about it. And that's that mental part that it can weigh very heavily on you. We found that there's some men in our group that they won't, they won't even talk about that to their son. They've got prostate cancer, and they can't relay that conversation to a group. Friendship setting, so we can we can speak openly about it because that, that that mental stress can be a big hurdle. Now, once you you know with the prostate, why is it so important that you see your doctor? You know, because sometimes we kind of like, especially with well, men and black men, we tend to don't want to go to doctor. You also had liver cancer. Yeah. Now, what were the symptoms that you had for that, and how did you deal with that as well? Well, uh, to be honest with you, Paul, I, I had no symptoms either one. Of them. I had no, um, no constant urination or prostate cancer. I had no, uh, no, no signs of liver. Nothing. Nothing. It was just a regular checkup that revealed certain things. Uh, like I said, with my PSA level, mm-hmm. once they started looking at the PSA level, the x-rays, things of that nature, then it revealed the liver cancer. Then uh, it was a, a, a matter of how do we deal with both of these at the same time, or do we deal with both at the same time? So um, treatment for me was very uh, uh, holistic in a, in a way because uh, I, I changed my diet. And the, the real good thing about it, at that time I was on this exercise regimen. So I was in pretty good health to start it off. You know, I've gained some uh, COVID pounds and stuff like okay. that since then, but 
Uh, I was in pretty good health prior to that. So, and, and that was before me actually knowing that I had the, uh, uh, the, the, the liver or the prostate cancer. But um, I had no, no, uh, no signs of either one until such time we started digging in. And I said, okay, we have this, you have that. How do you want to treat this? How do you want to treat that? So it was a, a mere fact of let, let's cut out what we can cut out and just take it on out. Uh, for me, you know, other other uh, uh, individuals, they may feel like they want to lose radiation and other kind of types of treatment. But just for me, just take these little pieces out and let's let's keep it moving. If I if I can, you know, God willing, then we'll we'll just keep it moving from there. But uh, yeah, like I said, there was no signs of anything. It just uh, once we started digging in, okay, we got this, we have that. How are we going to deal with it? Okay. Being that you are possibly an expert in those, in the prostate and liver cancer area, what are some of the signs that people can possibly, you know, mm -hmm. notice if they can, you know. Right, right. Yeah, my doctor was telling me that, um, I'll call it an expert, but I, I, I yeah, yeah. My, my doctor was telling me that uh, something like erectile uh, dysfunction, uh, constant urination, uh, those are some of the, the, the key warning signs of, of your prostate, something uh, that may be wrong with your prostate. Uh, and, and it's kind of funny because after you, like in my case, I had the prostate taken out because after that, you actually have to go into uh, uh, these exercises, you know, like Kegel exercises that the, most women will do. You actually have to do that yourself. And uh, that's to, uh, because your body, the, the prostate actually holds back the, uh, the, the water in, in your body. So now you have to train your muscles to do that, that y y yourself. And that, that's a little bit different exercise that most men aren't accustomed to doing. But, um, but yeah, th those, those are some of the things that uh, will happen afterwards. Uh, and, and afterwards, you will have some of those things that uh, you thought that you would have before. Like the, the urination part, um, uh, holding back your your, your, your urination. Um, some some guys they don't practice they don't they don't practice and, and strengthen those Kegel muscles, so they actually will discharge water at, at any given time. So uh, there, there's a uh, there's a, a mental thing of wearing a diaper. Um, you know it's kind of it's kind of uh, funny, but as I was going through the the, uh, the process, um, I actually had to. During my recovery period, I actually had to wear a diaper, and that's something that most guys. Oh gosh, you you, you have to wear, wear a diaper. And you actually tell people that. Yeah, yeah, because that was healthy for me to expose myself like that. Yes, sir. Okay, so I actually had to wear a diaper, and and, and it motivated me to try to get my uh, my muscles together so that I can get to a point where I didn't have to do that. Um, but yeah, wearing a diaper, um, actually changing my diaper. I had a a story where I went over to a friend's house and uh, they, they had a brand new baby and everything. And this is right after I had surgery and I was re uh, right after I was able to uh, walk about and everything like that. And um, went over to the house and I went and I said, hey, where do you want me to put my diaper? You want me to put it with the baby's diaper? <laughs> but uh, it, 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 was, it was one of those things you have to, you, you had to uh, actually, for me, I had to laugh about it. Because, you know, I, I have uh, the church family would call me some, from time to time. They said, what, what can we do for you? What can we do for you, Brother Stewart? And I said, well, I tell you what, y'all can have a, a diaper party for me because uh, these diapers are expensive. So <laughs> you can sort of help offset the, the cost of diapers. But I, I, and I laugh about a lot of things that are very painful to a lot of other people. And, and, and I think that brings them uh, a comfort level to say, well, that happened to me, it, it, you know, it happened to him, it could happen to me. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. And, and, and having people, having, especially men, feel okay with it, it's happening and it does happen. Because right now, a lot of men, like I said, when they, when they come across the prostate cancer or the liver cancer, they um, go into a shell, they go into a hole. Um, but you, using the resources that you have, the friends that you have, the family, uh, is, is going to be very important to you to reach out. Um, uh, like I said, it, I, I had a great support system in place for me. Uh, fantastic. As uh, a matter of fact, the day I went into the hospital, the uh, doctors were so surprised because I had uh, my Epsilon Epsilon brothers 
came in full force. I had 15 of those brothers came in to the hospital with okay. me to pray for me. And that, that, was, that was very moving. Um, and then afterwards, just uh, the, the support I had with the, the, the chapter, bringing food um, uh, to my house, uh, checking up on me. They had a schedule that they actually had that they, they would check up on me uh, during the course of the week. And then some of our lodge brothers, they'd come by and clean up the yard, cut the grass. So it, it was just a beautiful thing for me. But I had a support system. And we, a lot of us have a support system in place. But using that support system helped me with, during, these, uh, during this uh, disease. This, right. Being that you are a prostate and liver cancer survivor, how does that make you start appreciating life mm. more than you probably were before? this time frame. oh wow yeah 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 it, it's very important um went th- like i said with that 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 phase that i went through with denial and you know what's going to happen to me after that you start really appreciating life and appreciating the people around you uh the true people around you the pr- true uh, friends that you have around you um i, I tell you i every day i wake up and i and, and I, I i joke with a, a friend of mine and i said i've got a a uh a, a close knit family, uh, friends, family, uh, associates, and I appreciate those people that, that appreciate me. Um, but it makes you so aware of life and trying to make sure you do the best things you can for those around you. And uh, it, it's just a beautiful thing to see people smile, see people laugh, uh, see people happy, uh, and, and that in turn internalizes inside me and makes me happy, makes me a, a better person. Uh, but yeah, so I, I've uh, appreciated life a whole lot more because it is so fragile. From one step to uh, having a catheter in you for a couple uh, months to uh, being able to walk around, and and you said, "Wow, this 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 this, this thing we call life is it's something really really special to us." Now, with your program, Real Man, Real Talk, do you ever get emotional when? Talking about you coming from those process and how you are now and your positive attitude and all of this and how God has kept you and mm. how he's continuing to keep you and how you must encourage others. You get emotional sometimes. Oh, wow. We, we do. In our meetings, we have, like I said, we have guys in all walks of, of, of the workforce. And we talk, the ones that are able to talk, we talk so, I, I mean, this is like, this is like a, uh, a spiritual awakening for us. Uh, and we get very emotional. We get very passionate about what we talk about because it is so cr- critical that we get that message out to other men that you, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to um, um, go through this. It's okay to uh, voice your opinion. It's okay to be upset. It's okay, but yeah, that that that, that passion and the emotion—it's it, just—it just—it's it, it, real. It's real. And like I said, we have women from um, like the the sisters, the mothers. The um, I even invite my daughter to come and, and learn about what's happening with me, so that she can uh, be able to uh, at least tell her kids and tell somebody else in our family. You know, this is what you may have to go through. So, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a world change. Now, with programs like this, do you have a type program to help women with, you know, situations like liver cancer? Or type? We, we don't, per se. We, we, uh, for, ours, for, for us, um, we're, we're, we're all about real men, real talk, being able okay. to talk openly and, and honestly. Um, we don't have anything for women that may be going through liver cancer or, or something like that. Um, ours is just an educational for the, uh, the man's perspective. Um, and, and, and so the, the women that do come, they learn what their spouse or what their husband or what their um, boyfriend or um, father may be going through mentally. because it, it, It's a drain mentally. So they learn a little bit more about what's happening with their mental state uh, for, for their uh, significant other, um, so, but not, not, not in particular for women. 
Okay, with your program, have you ever thought about possibly having like a Zoom? Because you know you probably have people in different cities mm -hmm. who may want to join your program that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Probably interested in probably getting, because they have that same prostate liver cancer, you know, and right, they right. might want to, is that something that you possibly can look into? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I mean, we, we, the, the, uh, there's in, endless possibilities. As a matter of fact, never really thought about doing something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, you you brought something uh, very uh, poignant to uh, our attention uh, that we can possibly do. You know, just 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 so that we could reach more men, right. more men out there that that want to uh, be exposed to this, want to learn more about it, learn, want to hear men talk about what their the, the issues may happen. Uh, because uh, the treatment is it, so many different ways you can treat this. Um, so, and we it, it, we're fortunate that we've got men in our Real Men Real Talk uh, uh, group that have been treated in so many different ways. Um, there's some that go into the radiation. There's pills. There's injection. There's I mean, there is a number of ways. And luckily for us, we've got men that have been treated. And all those different facets. So, um, but yeah, that's 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 definitely something we can uh, actually look into doing mm -hmm. something like that with a uh, a Zoom and, and trying to venture off. Of that. Yeah, because um, I guess that Zoom thing. This is something that really, I guess, we might think about the COVID as probably a negative, but mm -hmm. bringing the Zoom thing. This is something that really, you know, because it, you can visit people from far away. By that internet. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, you definitely. Know. Yeah, that, that's definitely something we'll talk about because we have a real man, real talk every month mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Um, we, we do that, and uh, we we meet up on a Sunday, and it's for like a couple hours. But that's definitely something we can actually do a Zoom, um, a Zoom meeting w w with with just that that format. Yeah, that, that's really something we can think about. Okay, well, you do it then, then kind of put me in okay, as far yeah, as yeah, I, 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 I thought it an idea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, yeah. So I know we're coming close to the end of the show and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, so what are some of the things that you would like to say to the viewing audience about? Because you also had COVID. So how did you deal with having that COVID? Wow, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that, that, that was an amazing experience because there again, I believe God put me in a situation for, for not for my detriment, but for my benefit. Um, I, I had COVID last year uh, around April. Uh, it was a situation where the doctor said, well, you just come off of, of cancer a few years back. Um, do you want to go into the hospital? We can put you on a ventilator. But back April of 2000, uh, uh, 2020, a lot of people were going in, but they weren't coming out. So I was very skeptical of that, and I said, well, I'll just stay at the house. And fortunately enough, um, you know, I, I, I saw it through. And there's a, one of those little things we always talk about, see it through. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, so I, I saw it through. And later on, I, I did some routine checks, and, and the, uh, the doctors said that I had the antibodies in me, and they would love to have my plasma. This is back in... Uh, August, September of 2020. So I started giving my plasma to the, um, the Red Cross. And they said that there was, and I became a, a AAA donor. And my plasma went straight from my body to Grady, uh, the uh, emergency unit, to folks that were in um, critical condition with, 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 uh, with, with COVID because I have uh, o, o, o positive blood. See, there again, God put me in a situation that was not for my detriment, but for my benefit. So my O positive blood being universal, I could give blood to anybody. Plus, I had the antibodies in me, and I had a full spectrum of antibodies in me. So uh, it, was, it was actually a good thing. And my blood went straight to the, um, uh, the, the critical unit of those folks that were in uh, uh, Grady there. So. It's it's been a it's been a, a blessing, it's been a blessing. So as far as 
working? I started, do you, you know, how do you handle employment or do you do that or? Oh, yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, pay, I gotta pay the bills. I gotta eat, yeah. man. I gotta eat. <laughs> you know, I, I went from a, a job that was paying much more to a job that's paying uh, much less. But in the end run, I have less stress, which is very important to me. Less stress, and it gives me, it affords me an opportunity to come down and, and be on the Paul yes, Brown sir. show. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so uh, that that's a good thing. I'm, I, I, and in every walk of life that I, I have right now, it's about having less stress, smiling more, and enjoying life. You know, I used to tell people uh, when I uh, used to interview uh, folks, uh, you, there's a there's a five point to a five star, and to be a star. In my book, you had to be the right person in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing for the right reason. So um, I happened to be that that star. I, I was in the right place in the right, doing the right thing at the right time, and, and the whole nine yards. So I've got to enjoy that fact. I've got to enjoy life a little bit more, uh, and I've gotten a chance to do that. And I've been blessed to, to come through all three of these. And, and even with that, uh, I had the death of my mother in between those, those, those uh, the, the cancer and the COVID. So it's been a, 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 a blessing because my mother was able actually to uh, see me when I was sick. And I, I may not have seen her prior to her, 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 uh, her death. So I've got to count it all joy. I know we're running short on time. Daryl, if someone wanted to get in contact with you, how would they go about doing that? Oh, wow. Uh, they contact the Paul Brown show, I guess. They do that. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. So that's how it's going to be. <laughs> well, Daryl, I, I appreciate you coming on the show, and hopefully you'll be able to start that Zoom session for the – well, when do you uh, have your meetings on um, in Atlanta? Uh, normally it's the uh, fourth Sunday of the month. Yeah, normally it's the fourth Sunday of the month, and we, we'll meet at uh, one of the hospitals that there. They'll give us a room. And um, or one of the medical units, they will actually give us a room. Uh, but I, I can give you all that information there. Uh, okay. All, all right. We'll do that. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Okay. Good Thank day. you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the show. You'll be encouraged. Thank you. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. My, oh, oh, my, oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I pledged him. I pledged him. Yeah. I pledged him. Oh, I, 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 I was a, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was the DP. I was the DP. Oh, yeah, I was the DP oh, that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I started in 72, okay, and I got drafted and went to the Army for the fall of 72. I got out of the Army in the fall of 75, and we started pledging in the spring of 76, and I went over in March of 